How to clean your indoor air and surfaces tutorial. Air pressure, air pathways, and insulation. This is chapter 12. Be sure to check out my other videos. The Earth's atmosphere has weight and creates pressure. The amount of this atmospheric pressure, also called ambient pressure, varies by altitude. The higher the location, the less atmosphere is available to press down on the surface. Atmospheric pressure also varies depending on weather conditions. Now, air pressure in your home and between rooms is a different air pressure. I have the dew point monitor example here because sometimes certain air sensors actually require an air pressure sensor to get an accurate number. On the right, you have a type of air pressure sensor that allows you to know if a room is negative or positive pressure or not. Modern cell phones often have an air pressure sensor built in. The barometric pressure, though, needs to be set to your local pressure in order for the altitude reading to be correct. If your atmospheric pressure changes, so too will your altitude, even if you don't move or change position. The barometric pressure reading, on the other hand, will typically appeal to anyone in interested in weather forecasting. There are many types of air pressure sensors. Absolute pressure sensors, relative gauge pressure sensors, differential pressure sensors. Manufacturers often use different words and vocabulary terms to describe these sensors. It's very confusing. Just know there is more than one type of air pressure sensor. When you have a poor air pressure setup in your home, it could lead to more mold in your home. So again, this is very important to understand if you don't like mold. With certain types of air pressure sensors, you can actually gauge the airflow in your home. There are many YouTube videos about this and articles. I suggest reading further if you are intrigued so you can understand how air moves in your home, if your home is poorly insulated or not. Here is an incorrect air pressure setup. When you're sick, you're not supposed to be in a positive pressure room because when you exhale virons, it'll leave the room and it could get other people sick. Here is the correct setup for air pressure. You're supposed to be in a negative pressure room when you're sick. That way, when you cough out virons, they will more likely stay in the room and not get other people sick. Again, with certain types of air pressure monitors, you can actually measure this. So the negative pressure room has less pressure than the positive pressure room. You don't need to do this. I just wanted to show this as an example. So obviously opening windows can affect air pressure, but I wanted to show this example that a study showed that exhaled virus particles vented outside can actually come back inside. So if a person's coughing out virus particles, it can go outside and can travel back inside through open windows in different rooms or different floors. This is something I think, you know, some people might find intriguing. Using a fan to manipulate air pressure. So let's say someone in your home is sick. You can actually put a fan in your room to help control air pressure so virus particles don't get spread through the home. This is not 100% foolproof, but it will help a lot to ensure other people don't get sick in your home if someone is sick. A thermal camera is a device that detects infrared energy or heat and converts it into a visual image. So these homes, you can see where there's poor insulation and where heat is being leaked out. This is another way of understanding air pressure in your home. If you have an old home, you might have more air leaks. On average, heating and cooling compromise 54% of a home's annual utility bills. Wall insulation can reduce a home's heat loss by 67%, while attic insulation can lead to a 40% decrease in heating and cooling costs. 10% of your home's heating bill costs stem from uninsulated floors. Insulating basement walls or slab foundation can reduce heating costs by 10 to 20%. Where does heat loss happen in the most of your home? 26% of the heat loss is via the roof, 33% through the walls, 8% through the floor, 3% through gaps or around the door, 18% through gaps in and around windows, 12% via ventilation. Here are some insulation graphics. I again suggest reading further into this if you are intrigued. I know for example my windows were very poorly sealed and I had to go about fixing that. Some more images of insulation. I also wanted to notate insulation can become contaminated, so it's something you might want to check up on. A cold air draft can actually leak through the outlet itself. You can actually insulate the outlet to save on heating and cooling costs. This is something just to keep in mind. In the second image, you can actually see you can further seal your windows to help prevent air pollution from outdoors coming indoors and to help save on heating and cooling costs. So when you're cleaning, there's a lot of air pollution. 
particles and volatile organic compounds something to keep in mind I don't do this myself because I'm a hypocrite but if you're doing a deep cleaning or even regular cleaning you might want to consider wearing a mask so you don't breathe in all this stuff as you're cleaning a huge part of air pressure is whether or not your HVAC or furnace is turned on or off this will affect air pressure in the home it's just something to be aware of so your HVAC cycles on and off it can run for 20 minutes every 60 minutes and when it runs it can help clean the air pollution in your home and that's a good thing but if it's not running because it's not going to constantly be running air pollution in your home can just linger around so you can see here the HVAC is not running so air pollution is just leaking around again this also affects air pressure in your home now most of this video will discuss kitchen air pollution. I'm just using kitchen and cooking as an example. You can apply this concept to many events that create air pollution. So when you're cooking, the density of air pollution will be highest near the oven and stove. And it will, the further you go away, it won't be as densely air polluted. So when you're cooking, rooms near the kitchen could have more toxic air versus rooms further away and the air will generally leak through the door itself so the air pollution density will be higher near the door so as you can see here bedroom three has more air pollution than bedroom one and i also want to notate if you look at the living room there is no door so it could have more air pollution as well as a result of no door so you know the pollution just walks right in after you are done cooking air pollution tends to average out across the rooms in the home so again, when you're cooking, it might be more polluted in certain areas, but once you're done, it should average out across the rooms in the home. Generally speaking, it's a smart idea to open up windows when you're cooking to help the air pollution go outside instead of spreading in the home. Sometimes opening windows can backfire. If you have a very windy day, it can actually redirect air pollution into another room. This happens to me often in my own home just because of the way the home is set up. So I often have more air pollution in my room than the kitchen itself while someone's cooking. Now if you have multiple windows open, let's say in the kitchen and in the bedroom, it can affect air pressure and where the air pollution goes. So again, which windows you have open and closed affects air pressure and where the air pollution is going. So if you don't have a great setup, you can actually make your air worse in your home. So let's say bedroom two had an air purifier. It can actually cause mold that's on the wall in the bathroom to become airborne again. So it's no longer on the surface, it's in the air, and it will draw that mold spore into your room for you to inhale. We don't want this. So how could we overcome this? Well, we could just put an ionizer in the bathroom so there's no mold to begin with. So let's say most of the windows in your home are open, but one bedroom has the windows closed. That bedroom could have significantly more air pollution versus the other rooms in the home. Where you are seated matters. So imagine someone's cooking in the kitchen and your windows open. The kitchen air pollution might be drawn into your room. And if you're near the door, you can inhale 10x more air pollution. And if you can see the green guy in the corner, if my desk was in that position, I would inhale so much less air pollution as a result. So air pressure and airflow, just keep this in mind that it, it's really important if you want to inhale less pollution throughout the day. Again, here's another example where an air purifier can actually make the air in your room worse. So let's say I had an air purifier in the bedroom and someone's cooking in the kitchen. The air purifier would draw the toxic air in the kitchen into the room and making the air in this room much worse. Now how would I overcome this problem? Simple, I'll put a second air purifier in the kitchen to help draw the air away from my room to ensure that I have cleaner air. When you put an air purifier near the window, even if you have good insulation, it can actually draw outdoor air pollution, particles or gases into your home. If possible, try not to place an air purifier near the window. It's not that big of a deal if you do, but it's preferred that you do not. If you place an air purifier near the door, it will draw a lot of outside air, like in other rooms or the hallway, into your room. This is not a big deal, it's just something to be aware of. 
Outside pollution events can increase air pollution indoors. So if someone's mowing the lawn, you have a lot of volatile organic compounds being emitted. So what I suggest is to ensure your windows are closed when someone's mowing the lawn nearby. I can tell you myself, I have allergies when someone is actually cutting the grass outside my own window. I wanted to show you how you can place and go your ionizer devices. So you can place it straight off, you can place it sideways, you can put it at an angle. Um, it really depends on your setup. Um, I would suggest, generally speaking, attaching it to a fan or air purifier to help draw air or spread ions in the, in the room. You don't need to do this, you can just simply have the ionizer plugged in. I just wanted to show some examples. Sample setup. So I wanted to show you how a home could be designed with air purifiers and ionizers. It's really about preference. So bedroom one might want a fan with their ionizer to help spread ions around. Bedroom two might not want the noise of a fan and might just want to use a simple ionizer. Bedroom three might want an air purifier attached to an ionizer because they want the cleanest air possible. The kitchen, you probably want both because cooking creates a lot of air pollution. I believe all bathrooms should just have an ionizer because the humidity is so high in there and it's just a good idea to kill mold before it can possibly grow and replicate. In the living room, you might want to put an ionizer near the window because you might live near traffic and just kill that air pollution before it gets into your home. Please let me know if you have any questions. Be sure to check out my other videos.